Hi, this is Shelly Physics, episode on power. We're going to get a lot of work done in just a little bit of time. This is going to be a powerful episode because power is the rate of work done, just work over time in its simplest form. And you might be wondering what the unit of power is. Exactly. Watts is the unit of power. Watts the unit for power. That's exactly right. So power is measured in watts. You might see that on a light bulb. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it in mechanical power, but that's what we're really talking about here in this episode is mechanical power as opposed to electrical power. They both have the same units. Uh, it can be uh, electrical energy can be converted into mechanical energy, mechanical into electrical. It's very portable, and that's why we uh, that's that's why we study energy. That's why we come up with this these concepts of work because it's a very portable kind of quantity. It goes between all facets of physics. So watts is the unit of power, work over time. And I look into a little bit more into that. We've just been studying work and the work kinetic energy theorem. So if we apply a force to an object and it gets displaced, some kind of delta x. Um, what we really haven't been talking about is how quickly that happens. We could push this thing really slow. There's no friction. It doesn't matter how slow, how how small the force is. Um, or we push it very quickly, so the the outcome might be different. Um, just in how much how much uh, power is output. So think of a a, a car. You might have a, a low output power of a car or a high output. Uh, what's the difference between a sports car and a regular car? Why do you buy a sports car? Well, the, we're still limited by the speed limit on the road, 60, 65, up to 80 miles per hour in some parts of the country. That's the speed limit. So why get a bigger engine, faster car? Because it's not about you know speed always, but it's sometimes about acceleration, uh, how, how you can do the work faster. Now those cars, those sports cars, can go faster than a just a regular sedan. Um, so they could do it, like go from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain faster, possibly, and that would be a higher power output. The same amount of work done, but in a shorter amount of time. So here's what we're adding here: some kind of little time interval. It takes a delta t to make this delta x happen. So we put all this together, what is work in its general form? Force times a displacement. If we've got a constant force and dividing it by delta T. So there it is, work over time. But we do see this very familiar character here, a delta X over delta T. So power can also be in the um, form of a, a force times an average velocity. And that comes in handy, let's say an elevator What's the power output of the, the motor on an elevator? Well, you just take the average velocity of the elevator as it lifts upwards, it's moving at a constant velocity, and the lifting force of the elevator, and you've got the power output. So our first application, we're gonna take just a car. This is the Shelly Mobile. There it is. And uh, we're gonna displace it. We're gonna go a few kilometers here. We're gonna to go to work, okay? So our delta X is uh, three 3,000 meters, three kilometers to work. We live just around the corner from, from work. And the average engine force being applied here is, we'll say uh, 2,000 Newtons. Now let's add on to this some, some drag. Um, our average amount of drag force against our car turns out to be 400 newtons. Okay, and it uh, takes us about five minutes to, uh, to make this journey. So let's see our average power output that's coming from this. So five minutes times 60 is 300 seconds. There we go. So you notice I'm, I'm converting, uh, instead of using kilometers and, and minutes, I'm using meters and seconds. We have to use uh, the, the standard units. A joule is a newton, uh, newton times a meter. So we have the newtons as meters per second squared times kilograms times another meter. So we always have to use these, these standard units. Just be careful about that. All right, um, so wow, there's a lot involved here. So we might look at a couple of different aspects here. What's the power output of the engine? How powerful is drag? Okay, and what's the, you could say the, 
uh, the power from the total work, the, the net work done by this um, by the system here. Okay, so power is work over time. Uh, so we might find the work done by the engine first. That would be the 2,000 newtons as the force. It's in the same direction as the displacement. I actually don't have a direction here, so I'll give a direction to that displacement. So it's in the same direction. We'll put 3,000 meters. So that work done by the engine is 6 megajoules. That's uh, 6,000 joules, okay? Um, now when we do apply it to power, we should you know, keep that in mind. We're going to put 6 million back in there. How about the work done by drag? The drag is in the, uh, we've got 400 newtons and displacement is still 3,000 meters. Now what I did leave off here, of course, was a cosine of zero. These two, uh, the force of the engine and the displacement were in the same direction. So there's a cosine zero in there that gave us a times a one. But here we've got a cosine of 180 because the displacement and the force are in opposite directions. So that gives us a negative 12. And we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five zeros. And you see that's about 1.2, negative 1.2 megajoules of work done. Okay. So there's the, the work done by all our goobers here. Let's move it down a little bit. All right. And uh, so how powerful is all this? Well, the, the power output of the engine, if that's our question, what's the power output of the engine? We're just looking at the work done by the engine. Uh, so that'd be the six megajoules divided by the time, 300 seconds. Now, is it six divided by 300? Well, it's really six million divided by 300. Okay. And uh, let's do a little bit of mental math here. Take the those off, and we're left with a two and four zeros. One, two, three, four. There it is. So we've got twenty thousand watts, or twenty kilowatts of power, is our power output of the engine. And what about the uh, power from drag? The drag power. Uh, that would be the one point two megajoules. So one million two hundred thousand joules divided by 300 seconds you can get a little canceling going on there and we're left with 12,000 divided by 3 is 4,000 or 4 I have a 20 up there there we go 4 kilowatts so we got 20 kilowatts from the engine 4 kilowatts from the drag and our total power therefore would be you know 16 kilowatts all right so that's power output of an engine. Now what about uh, power and lifting? Because we're often looking for the most powerful person. So what if you lift something up? I'll say delta Y, okay? Uh, we're gonna lift something upwards um, uh, 0.8 meters. This is quite a bit of weight. We're gonna go with, uh, hmm, what's, what's kind of heavy here? Let's go with 200 kilograms. That'd be about 500 pounds. I'm talking about a major weight lifter here, lifting up 0.8 meters. All right, so this is probably from the shoulders, uh, uh, maybe a little bit more than that, but we're just gonna go with it. They kind of bend their knees a little bit, how about that? So we're gonna lift this object up 0.8 meters. What's up with this? So I'm gonna say, see, power equals work over time. Let's so keep that in mind. So we're lifting uh, the weight, or the sorry, the work done by that lifting force, we'll call that F. It's a work done by F, okay? We're gonna have the the weight is what we need to lift up. You notice when we when we lift it up at the very top, it's not gonna be the, this barbell, whatever that's holding the weights on the end, isn't gonna go flying up in the air, it's just gonna stop. Gravity is gonna be working here also. There's a, as we lift it up, there's, there's the weight of the object going down. So in all these vertical scenarios, when you lift up weights, what you're working against is the weight. So this, this pushing force upward to lift it up at a constant speed has to be equal to the weight going down. So that, that work done by the force F is gonna be the weight of the object. And we're gonna lift it up 
what distance? 0.8 meters. Okay, so we're, I'll just go ahead and put a, a delta Y in here, just keep it general at first. And we're going to plug in the 200 kilograms times 9.8 times 0.8. I made it more difficult for myself now. We've got a 1,960 times 0.8. And that's 15, 1,568 joules. So 1.568 kilojoules. All right, uh, what about the work done by gravity? And just remember that gravity is still the weight, but in the opposite direction. So this would be a, a negative 1,568 joules. And that's why that barbell will come to the rest at the very top, because the work you put in is also the work that gravity takes back out. It's the energy gravity takes back out. There's that negative work done, giving us a total work of zero. It's change in kinetic energy between the beginning and the end is zero. So, uh, what is the, you know how powerful is this person? Well, I didn't really get get time involved here. So, if you lift it up slowly, you might not be as powerful as someone who could lift it up quickly. So, let's say we're going to just lift it up in a in a half second. It's pretty quick. Okay, so if it's a half second, then how powerful are we? Work over time is that 1568 divided by a half second. So it's joules per second. That's what a watt is. It's measured in joules per second. And it's just going to be uh, multiplied by two. So it'll be 3,100. Six plus six is, or is 12. So that'd be a two. Uh, but we do have an eight, so it'd be a. Uh, I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> it's actually in the morning when I'm recording this. This is not working. <laughs> not working. <laughs> That'd be 36. I was gonna put a two there. I was like, wait, that should be a three. Eight plus eight is 16. So there we go. There it is. A little disconnect. 3,136 watts in that excellent Shelly stylized number three. Excellent. Most important number there. So what if this object were an elevator and we were lifting it up at a constant rate? Um, then uh, just, if, if you recall, just remember this work is a force times a displacement and displacement over time is velocity. So if we think of this as F times V, all right, then we could also work this problem out it's not an elevator here. We're still dealing with the, the same barbell system. Um, we can still work this out by taking that, that weight force, this 1600 or 1,960 newtons times the velocity. And the velocity is uh, 0.8 meters, that average velocity, 0.8 divided by... Um, what was it a half second okay so if we if we first figure out the average velocity 0.8 divided by 5 or 0.8 divided by 0.5 um, that'll give us a 1.6 meters per second so if you have the velocity that average velocity multiply it by that average force and you're still going to get the same value out of that Okay, so that's just an alternative way to look at, at power if you have a velocity instead of a displacement in time. Okay, now do keep in mind if we're dealing with springs, uh, this work isn't going to be just a, a force times a displacement. You're going to have to take the integral of f of x dx. You know, springs for it would be a, that'd turn into a one half kx squared. So do keep in mind that uh, work has different forms. You can also look at power. Um, because work is a change in kinetic energy, you can also look at power as a change in kinetic energy over time. How quickly does the velocity change? Okay, um, and like I was just mentioning before, you might have to look at this as like a, a integral of f of x dx <laughs> divided by that that time interval. Okay, so there's there's all those different forms to keep in mind f dot x, you got the fx cosine theta is, is what that interprets into. 
for the changing forces. I got that. And don't forget, change in kinetic energy is a one half mass final velocity squared minus one half mass initial velocity squared. That might go on this top line as well. There's a lot of things that can get pushed into this. So don't forget all those forms of work. But power power is sort of like icing on the cake. It's you take that work divided by the time. It's um, not too hefty. Now there's one last aspect we're gonna look at here. What if we plot work over t work and time? So I, I, as I'm lifting a barbell, I might do a little bit of work in the first part of the lift, a little bit more on the second part of the lift, and you know more than that, maybe for that top part of the lift because I got to get my arms straight up. So work might be done in increments. You could look at it as work being done in increments. As we lift something up, the, the work done should increase as well. All right, so that gives us a, a slope. And if we look at you know the first second or the second second of lift or the third second, we're gonna be doing more and more work. But if you look at where these apply on the, on the Y axis, on my work axis, you'll notice that those increments are the same. We're so gonna plot out where each of those little moments in time are. So what we're seeing here is a, a constant rate of work done. Recall that since P equals, I've been saying just in general, W over T, it's really a small little bit of work or small time. This would be a, an instantaneous power output. Uh, and this really is a change. Work is a change. It's a change in kinetic energy. This is a time interval. So this would be like an average work done. Here's an instantaneous, sorry, average power. This would be an instantaneous power. Uh, we might also have a plot where the work isn't uh, exactly a, a, a constant, like a, a constant rate here. The power isn't a constant rate. Got to get my terms correct there. So what about a, a spring? That's a one half kx squared. So you might have a, a quadratic out of that. All right, so that's not going to be a nice constant slope. It'll have a, a curve to it. So do keep in mind that you can determine the power from the slope of this line. P equals dWtt. It's the slope. And there's our calculus aspect to this. That wraps it up on power. I hope you can do things, do all your work quickly. If you are, you'll be a powerful physics person. Powerful physics person. We'll be a PPP. Let's not go there.